three. All right. It'll tell me. It'll tell me in a moment when we're when we're actually live. So. Oh, I see. Does it do a countdown? No, no. I've done a little bit of countdown. Okay. All right. Here we go. How's it going, everybody? I know it's going to take a little bit before people jump on and join us, but uh, we are going to go live today. We're live now with uh, guest artist Susan Annan, who's going to be teaching us a little bit about gouache, painting with gouache. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit uh, with an official introduction and everything else. Um, so we're going to give it a couple of minutes. We're going to keep going officially at 2 o'clock. It is five minutes till. So wanted to jump on a little bit early to give people a chance to find the feed and to join us. All right, what's happening, Vanessa? How are you? Hello, hello. Cool. Could, uh, could you give me a sound? Could somebody give me a sound check? Make sure you can hear me okay. What's happening, Jill? All right, we've got a couple of people on already. You could, Vanessa. Vanessa wants to know if she can paint along, Susan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, Vanessa. So Vanessa uh, was one of the ones that posted. So she has, uh, she has, uh, she bought some gouache paints some time ago. She, Vanessa's quite talented. Uh, she paints on rocks often, like on oh, little awesome. rocks. She, um, she wants to learn a little bit more about the medium, but she showed a rock. She, she actually showed a, a a rock painting that she did of Martin Luther King, King Jr. Oh, uh, it's pretty pretty amazing. So you know, I'll have to check that yeah. out. Yeah, really nice. What's happening, Lori? Hi, Lori. Fantastic. Glad you're all here. Like I said, we're going to officially kick it off right at two o'clock my time, so that's three minutes from now. But Susan is on with us now, and uh, she can't see your comments. I have to relay them to her. She's actually monitoring the feed on Streamyard, or I'm over here on Facebook. Uh, monitoring the stream here. It's just a little bit easier if we work it that way. So, uh, you know, as you guys put comments in or ask questions and things like that, I'll be uh, relaying them to her. But, um, but yeah, that's how we're going to work this. Hopefully uh, it goes well. What's happening, Leah? Thank you for being here. All right. That little, little group going. Of course, we're going to be recording the session. If any of you uh, can't stick around for the entire uh, session, we're gonna we're gonna you're gonna be able to come back and watch this later. Now we're running, we're looking to go about an hour and fifteen minutes, an hour and thirty minutes max. We don't want to make it super long, so we'll see how far along Susan can uh, get with her painting. Um, what whether she finishes today or not, we're, we're not quite sure, right? We'll see how far <laughs> we go. She will be sharing the finished piece at some point uh, afterwards. Yeah, Jill. Uh, so Jill says, I would like to see the rock as well. She posted it under uh, the, I think one of the posts that I made around this earlier today, she posted the rock in the comment section. She, you should go check that out. Yeah, Vanessa's quite talented. Maybe one day we're going to have her uh, jump on and do a tutorial on painting, painting on little, little rocks. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, she, that's she fun. Does, does an awesome job. So, but let's see who else is on. Did I miss anybody? What's happening, Rachel? Now, Rachel Simmons is joining us all the way from, from England. So what time is it out there, Rachel? And then there's Kay. How's it going, Kay? All right. We've got a little, a little crew on here today. All right. Cool. Sometimes the comments drop off on my feed, so uh, hopefully... Hopefully I'm able to see all of them throughout. But if not, I, I do have a, I have a backup in case that happens. But all right, everybody, it is one minute till it's about to be two o'clock. Uh, let's go ahead and kick this off. So you guys are joining in today on our loop wash tutorial. Susan Annan, the talented Susan Annan, <laughs> is joining us today. So if everyone can say... Uh, Hello to Susan. Like I said, she can't see your comments. I have to relay them to her, but if everyone could say hello to Susan. And she's hello, an everyone. It's great to be here. <laughs> she's an amazing artiste. And um, Susan, where can they find you? Could you tell us really quickly where they can find some of your some of your uh, projects, your social media? Where, where can they find you? Sure. 
Sure, I have um, an Instagram account that is SA and then underscore art and then underscore studio. That's where I've posted a lot of my just artwork. And then also I have um, a Facebook page, Paint Life Awesome, and another Facebook page. And the Paint Life Awesome is where I'm going to be doing more demos and, and that type of thing. And then um, Ann and Fine Art, which I know, Jesse, you're going to put it in the comments um, yep. on Facebook as well. Yeah, and I just started a Paint Life Awesome on Instagram just so I could have both platforms, but I haven't really posted much there yet. So it's coming. <laughs> Could you could you also give us a little bit of background on your you know on the, the types of art that you do now? Uh, Susan doesn't just do work with wash; um, she has other mediums that she uh, works with as well. Could you give us a little background around that, Susan? Yeah, you know, I um, started as a art student long ago, and um, then and so I've I've you know worked with um, you know all different types of media: watercolor, acrylic, and oil, and pastel. Um, and then, uh, time, you know, I've had a family and such, and then, uh, I started painting again and I really got back into oils. I was doing before I, before I had my family and stuff, I was doing, uh, a lot of portraits and studying that. And so, um, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's one thing. And, um, I guess oils is what I've been doing mostly lately. And then I got into doing gouache as a way of um, like sketching and stuff for large scale oil paintings, you know, or just, just like trying to work things out out in the field. Like I love painting outside. And so it was a quick way to get a statement down and um, get some like a color study down. And also for travel, um, a gouache is very, very easy to travel with so that's kind of how I got back into gouache I I guess it's been about a year and I've been I've been um, doing it back and forth I guess oils and gouache so it, it it's that's 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 pretty it pretty much it what's your what's your favorite medium uh, do you have a favorite medium to work with um I guess oil right now is you know it's what I've been working with mostly it's what I've been trying to um, kind of master, I guess, uh, just as we're all trying to improve continuously, I'm always uh, trying to improve as well and just practice and stuff. So um, I guess I've really mostly been painting right now in oils and gouache, both of those things right now. Um, the gouache will can, can feel a little like oil because you can layer it and blend it a bit. Um, so so the, I guess that, I guess oils right now is, that's probably what I, I'm really into. And like I said, I've been painting with gouache now, though, pretty consistently for about three months. And um, I'm really liking it. Um, it's fun because, you know, uh, like I think I started, too, with like in oils, I have to be in another room. And like if I wanted to, I was trying to do, a, you know, like a daily painting practice and stuff. And um, that's the great thing about gouache is, you know, you can be around other people. <laughs> in your household and it does you don't have to have the turf and all that so i could you know maybe people were watching tv i could just have my little setup and i'd be doing sketches and stuff and so it's it's kind of versatile in that way too you know you can just set up in a coffee shop and um go at it so very cool very cool so um for those of you that are following along or you know uh, hanging out with us right now i did post her uh, social media information in the comment section. Uh, her Facebook, she has, like, I think, a couple of Facebook pages. She has an Instagram. When you guys get a chance, please go check out. She has a bunch of beautiful pictures in there. Um, she has some landscapes, some portraits, um, and a few other things. So if you guys get a chance, please go follow her. I'm sure she'd appreciate that, but you also get to see what kind of other beautiful stuff she, she has created. Now, thanks, Jesse. Susan, uh, what what do you uh, so what do you what are we doing today? What are you going to show us? So, um, I am going. To, I have painted these roses that you have. I don't know if you have it on the screen or not, but um, I yep, painted these roses um, as a photograph of them in oils, and so I'm going to try it in gouache. Um, it's kind of going backwards. <laughs> what I usually do. I usually do the gouache and then I do the oil, but it, it'll be a fun experiment. Um, and I'll probably just concentrate on the roses. We'll see if we can get to all the rest of this. 
but um, just going to show you a little bit of the process that I go through um, and talk about some different things. So, um, you know, I always try to do a sketch first, maybe draw it out a few times to, to study it. And then also, you know, one of the main things look at our values. And so um, I usually work from life. And so working from a photo has its own challenges. Working from life has its own challenges. Um, but values are super important. So I always try to do a little value study. Here I just printed it out, you know, black and white. If you take out the saturation on your phone, you can do that through editing. And um, that's one way to start. And you could even do a value study from this in, in like a, you know, dark tone, like burnt number or something like that. Um, and then, let's see what I was going to say. And then I, yeah, then I'll do like a little sketch here to just kind of lay it out, get my composition and everything. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of get started with, uh, okay. with uh, just painting. I, um, I'm sure there will be lots of things that come up as I'm as I'm painting to talk about. Uh, sure. With gouache, I also, like, I'm using a half inch today because this is a somewhat smaller. Although with gouache, I, I do smaller stuff. Most of the time, I usually do a lot of landscapes, to be quite honest. And then I started doing some still lives, just because, like I said, I could do it. Um, I've lost one of my brushes. So here it is. Um, I usually use a, a one-inch brush, and um, but mostly for the landscapes, kind of getting just a, 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 a kind of a broad statement of what's going on. So anyway, we'll just get started here. Um, okay. So and if really you have any questions, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so really quickly, for those of you that are, uh, you know, in, you know, following along, uh, Susan was talking about values. That's something that we've only briefly touched on here and there. You've seen it. You've seen me kind of bring it up a little bit uh, within some of the tutorials that we've that we've done with uh, around painting. Um, that's something that we're going to be getting a little more into as we move along in the membership. But uh, Susan, do you want to talk a little bit about how you go about uh, so give us a little background around values and how you use them. Well, value is like one of the most important things. <laughs> and um, gosh, I, sorry about that. Um, for creating structure and really values is how we um, really recognize things, you know. Um, like that facial recognition software, it all has to do with the values of your face. Um, so it's, you know, we, we really rely on values and stuff too um, and in the in the relationship between values to distinguish that this is a rose you know even more so than the color we get excited about the color but the value even is what's really given it structure um if that makes sense does that make sense so the, values are the, the values are the are the uh, differences in oh, the, darks oh yeah sorry the value is definitely from different darks and lights like um this is a lighter value. This is a darker value. And if you see, all of these values have shapes to them. Um, and that's real important. As, a, as, as trying to see, like, artistry, you want to start um, understanding the difference, the relationship between values, that, there, you know, there's a, a range of values, and that in each... Um, seeing whatever you're looking at if it's an object or a landscape there there is shapes within those values and that's what gives us the structure of you know the composition and everything and to understand that that's a rose um does that make sense absolutely absolutely perfect thank you so much and so so yeah. that is something that we'll be talking about a little bit more especially uh, when we do some of the technical training, but I'm thinking probably as early as next month, we're going to be incorporating a little bit more color theory into uh, some of our technique classes. So there's a little yeah, bit of a short intro into that. You know, all um, painting and drawing, painting especially, is all about relationships, all different kinds of relationships, value, the ratio of values, the relationship and colors, the relationship and contrast. I mean, it's all relationships. Oh, what I what I just did was I did spritz my um, paper with a little bit of water. Is that showing up? There you go. Seems like the, it's going a little delayed. But anyway, that helps the paint or the gouache move a little bit. And then also I will, um, here's my palette just so y'all can see. It's a little bit, I have a piece of 
palette paper down. I just have one of those um, Masterson's Stay Wet palettes. Palettes. Um, yeah. And then I also, because the gouache dries really fast, um, I do have to like spritz it with the water as, you know, throughout the painting process. Um, that'll help. The palette helps it because it's a sponge underneath. So it's a getting absorbed or getting moisture from the bottom and then I spray it from the top too, especially like if I'm outside, it'll dry out fast. Okay, so gouache is a, is a quick drying, is it when you, when you compare it to acrylic, is it a little, does it dry a little bit faster normally? A little? I think it does fast? dry, I think it does dry fast, faster okay. than um, acrylic, but you know, I have, I haven't, I gotta tell you, I haven't worked with acrylic for a little while. Okay. Um, so, Anyway, so I'm first going to put in some darker values um, and I'm I'm using color like you could do a whole color study with, like I said, um, looking for my one color here. You could do it with like a, um, a burnt umber or something and you could do um, like, my, I don't have time to do that today, but like a just a one tone and do darks and do it, make it look similar to this, but with just one color. And then that way, what that helps with is to help you know what, um, when you put down color, it'll help you understand what value it is. So if you do an underpainting of um, a block in, and I'm gonna kind of do a block in right now, but, um, we do like an underpainting of for just values. It'll it'll be really helpful when you come back in and um, lay down color because then you can see oh that that is not the color or it's not the value or it is the value. You could, you'll be able to tell right away because it's laying down on top of um, it's laying down on top of the value that's underneath. Does that make sense? Yes, of course. Of okay. course. So uh -huh. what so what Susan's explaining is uh, go, going about a process, the process of approaching the piece where you would lay down um, a, a background in, it's, it's like a value study of the piece. So like she's got her, her picture of the, of, uh, the roses, of the roses in uh, black and white, you could do in everything, your background in one dark color with different values in it, right? You're, you go from your light to your dark, or dark to light, and then you would paint over the top of that with the actual colors in the piece. Uh, is that is that right, Susan? Is that what yes? That's that's perfect. Like I don't explain this a lot, so, oh, it's all good. <laughs> so this is good. It. This is good to yep, have yep. you to interpret it, what I'm saying. Um, it's you know, also a little thing. hard to paint and talk about it. <laughs> talk about yeah. It. Um, I don't, I don't do that a lot either. So this is good. This is good for me. Good, um, new experiences for me as well. But, you know, the other thing is we're working from a photograph and I had mentioned working from life. Um, and so I feel like, you know, it's and working from life is, um, is, is a whole nother set of challenges, but it's also, um, I think it's really good for everybody to experience. So I would challenge everybody to go buy a rose and play around with just looking at it um, and trying to do the best you can to see the, 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 the values and the, the, the shape of it and everything, and then take a picture of it. And I feel like it's, you know, sometimes it's easier to draw from a picture because everything's still, <laughs> and it, it's kind of just, it decides a lot for you as well. It's it's kind uh -huh. of already rendered 2D for you, right? It's already yeah. in 2D format. It's, it is, and it, it has all the shapes already divided up. And like when you're looking at the rows and live, then you're having to decide what the we have shapes a few are. People saying, we have a few people saying hi in the comments. Uh, Hello. We got, we got Liliana, we got Julie, Janice, Don, Anna, Tina. That's why she does. Let's see. Lori, Jill, of course, Diana, Vicky, Michelle, of course, Vanessa and Kay and Jill who joined us early on, Rachel. But hey, everybody, thank you for joining in. Of course, 
we got Susan here in case some of you guys jumped in a little bit later. Uh, she's going through and demonstrating. Uh, she's working from a photograph. The photograph is right above. In case yeah. you missed it, she has a photograph right above. Uh, yeah, I'm working from right now. this photo. But I actually have it right in front of me here. So, um, And if you see me squinting, you know, that's that's what I'm doing. I'm looking, I'm actually looking at my um, reference photo that I'm working from. And, um, you know, just like in life, I'll, be, I'll squint. It's good to squint when you're looking at your reference to kind of um, blur it and make, make it to where you can kind of see the simple forms and the simple values and simple shapes and then really simplify it uh, Very all together. Could you, could, you, could you repeat that, Susan? You, you squint to kind of blur everything out. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So I, um, that's, you'll see me squinting and I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I squint so that I can simplify um, what I'm looking at because I don't want to see it really as a rose. I really want to see it as values first and value shapes and, um, then I'll see the shapes of, you know, the colors within those values. But first I want to see, um, see it as, like not as a rose so much as, as um, just simple, simple values. And Beautiful. What, what shapes are those? I love so, that. I love that. Remember, we always talk about in the group, so we always talk about uh, different approaches to any particular painting right there's different ways to approach a painting and as you kind of experiment with as much as you can you start to learn your own um, best practices kind of what you like what works best for you um, so part of the reason why i want to be bringing guest artists into um into the group and showing us you know their their processes and stuff is because i think it's really nice to see other approaches and to kind of get you know uh, a variety of different uh, techniques and watch somebody else do it. So thank you so much for being, for being here, Susan. This is looking awesome. And I've got a oh, few great. people in the comments saying thank you and, uh, you know, uh, awesome. they are appreciative that you're in here uh, giving it, giving us a little bit of a, of a demo here. Oh, well, it is super fun for me to be here. Um, I, like I said, I haven't done a lot of demos. I've helped my, my daughter, who is also an artist, um, and I'll show you some of her work because she painted these roses as well. And I actually brought it because I was like, I was looking for the roses that I had painted just as a reference. Because like I said, um, um, you know, seeing things from, from life, they look different than, I feel like it's easier to paint, draw from life or from, draw from a photo, but from life you get, the, the colors in the photograph are usually um, a little more, um, you know, they, they lose something. Uh, the darks are probably bluer and the lights sometimes can get blown out. So you, I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. Um, and so I like, that's why I like gouache too, is that I can take it with me and I can get like a lot of um, just notes of color. Even if I don't get a good drawing, I can get notes of color for then I'll take a photograph and then I'll take those pieces and, um, you know, can do a, a more realistic or finished painting from. Okay, I got to concentrate for a minute. <laughs> sure. That's yeah, already looking like... really pretty. Now, if you guys see me looking down at my, so I've got, I'm, I've got my phone up on top where it's recording me, but I'm monitoring the feed down on my laptop. So if you see me looking down, it's, I'm getting a better look at what's happening on the screen as opposed to having my little tiny phone screen up there. Eventually I'm gonna get a bigger monitor so I can, I don't have to be looking down, but if you see me looking down, it's because that's what I'm doing. It's looking beautiful, Susan. It's okay. already looking, it's already looking really nice. I like it. I, I love transitions in between a painting. A lot of times I almost even prefer, there's, all, there's typically an ugly stage, right? Between uh, oh, yeah. start <laughs> to, to what you're going to, but oftentimes I find that I'm really drawn to to in between stages they look so cool uh, right now oh yeah good i'm so glad it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you know the the rose i don't know if y'all painted a lot of roses i really haven't painted a lot but they're they're so beautiful and then, then they're so um they're so complex you know but so i think you know sometimes when things are complex it's better to to simplify even more so um 
And so just think about that when you're tackling something. And it's good to tackle something that, you know, you haven't done before either. It stretches your brain. There you go. And, Perfect. You yeah. guys heard, you guys hear from me sometimes. Huh? You guys just heard it from Susan. Stretching your brain, pushing <laughs> those boundaries of it is where a lot of the learning process happens. Um, so Susan, can you describe a little bit of what you're doing right now? I'm going to stop talking yeah. for a bit. Can you describe yeah. what, you, what you're doing? Yeah. I feel like I just messed this up and got this a little too dark. And so I'm, this is cool about gouache. You can, if your paper's good, I'm working on um, some Arches watercolor paper. That's what I'm working on. And if your paper's thick enough, you can really kind of go back in and erase um, in such a way that I know you can do that some with watercolor, but you know, with gouache, it doesn't do that whole bleed out kind of get the circles and rings around it. You know, if you've worked with watercolor, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so I feel like I got that too dark. Anyway, um, yeah, and so gouache dries pretty fast. It's um, very matte finish. That's one difference in like acrylic I know has like a kind of a shine to it um, when it dries. And gouache dries very matte. It was used for commercial um, commercial applications, you know, commercial art. And it would photograph really well because of that matte quality. You wouldn't have to worry about any kind of um, glare. Got it. So you're laying down colors right now. They're, um, they're kind of general shape of blocking out the roses in a sense in some basic base colors. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely trying to. Um, and I just see, like, yeah, I'm just kind of blocking in right now. Definitely trying to, just trying to block in. And try to keep really mindful of um, those values that I talked about. And so I'll look at, I have a black and white um, down here of, of the, the image as well. And I keep looking at that because it's easy when you're putting color in to get um, to get wrapped up in the color and lose sight of your values. Yeah, perfect, beautiful. Um, Julie, so so Julie has a question. She says, "Miss the beginning. Is this a way of painting or a type of paint?" So, Julie, uh, gouache is a type of paint. That is, Susan, could you describe it? Could you? You'd be better at describing it. You, you know, I've only dabbled a little tiny bit in. Within so it, yeah, it's um, it's basically an opaque watercolor kind of. Um, it's a water-based media, and it's um, it's opaque. So you can layer it, um, and you can you can kind of do a wash, but you can't get like a really like you, a transparent wash like you can with watercolor. So um, that's the best way to describe it. It's just opaque. It's opaque um, water-based paint. I need to get a little bit more of this. Is that, have, is that helpful? It's kind of chalky, I would say. Um, and you could actually um, scrape off too, like I did. You could, I mean, it's kind of, it feels just like once it gets, if you, you can get kind of thick with it, but if you get too thick, it will crack um, because it, it, I don't know if it's because it's dry so quick, but it, it, it has kind of a chalky even feel to it, I guess. Um, but it, it blends well, too. So it's not like temper paint or something like that. It's it's much, um, much better. You have much more control than you would with something, you know, because temper paint's kind of like a chalky medium, too. But it's it's different than that. Um, now, um, you worked with acrylic paint, and you were mentioning that a lot, a lot of the reason, reasons why, or one of the main reasons why you enjoy using gouache is like is you like painting uh, outside landscapes often, uh, right? And so when you're you want something that's that's quick drying, is that right? Um. So with the painting the landscapes, it was more like I started using that when I was traveling. Oh. Um, yeah, that's okay. And 
that's kind of how I like, oh, this is fun. And then it's just kind of been fun to work with. Um, it's challenging too. Some another way, like I said, you know, keeping your brain going uh, with something new. Um, anyway, we've got some different values going on there. Sure. Julie, so uh, Julie is asking, is that is it is it the brand name of the paint? So gouache is more of a general type of medium, like acrylic or oil paints. Yeah. Uh, so it's just, uh, it's, or like watercolors. It's this just a general name for that particular yeah. medium. Yeah. You know and like there's, saying? there's two oh, different. Oh. Like I'm, I'm working with two different brands. I, I just happen to be working with Windsor Newton, and this M Graham. I don't know if you can see that M Graham. Um, but there's other, there's other types as well. Um, other other brands I should say and you know cool. like with with the photograph it's really kind of hard because I'm trying to um, I kind of have to make make it up to a certain degree because you, you know you don't want to just um, if you just copy a photograph then it will look like a copied photograph and that's why it's really great if you can paint with to paint with our paint paint with life um, you know, live subjects or whatever. It really shows you so many, so many different things. But it shows you things to where then when you go to paint with a photograph, you can kind of improvise a bit. Does that make sense? Of course, of course. I mean, it's good to paint from photographs. I'm not saying it's not good. It's just it's different. There's different things you can learn from each process. I think with photographs, like you're mentioning, some of the details lost. Um, Maybe some like some of the edges sometimes, uh, you know, depending on the quality of the photograph, it can lose something, uh, as opposed to doing it from a, from like a still life or, you know, uh, in person. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I think you lose some of the color, you know, um, or and, and that just depends. Sometimes it's just like, also about training your eye to see. You know, I think that also. Is a factor. Okay, I need to probably focus on one area here. I'm kind of getting all over the place. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> if you if you need to concentrate a little bit, uh, please feel free to do so. And then uh, for those of you that are watching, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments. And then uh, so Susan doesn't have access to the comments. I relay them over to her. She's she's um, monitoring this from StreamYard, whereas I'm kind of jumping back and forth between StreamYard and Facebook. So on Facebook, I'm able to see your comments on StreamYard. I can't. So if you guys have a question about anything, you could put it down in the comments, and then I'll I'll relay it over to Susan. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know that we're actually going to get through the entire painting. There's 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 a lot involved in there, and that's a really pretty picture with lots of detail that we picked uh, to do the demo on, but um eventually wherever we end up with today um susan will complete the piece piece and then share it uh on her social media and then um perhaps i'll you know I'll also share it within the group to show you guys what that completed piece looks like but um also um gouache will dry like a shade <laughs> that's another challenge of it it actually dries darker um, than when you're mixing it over on your palette. It'll dry darker. So, like, if I put something down and it matches, um, then I know it's probably going <laughs> to actually be. Change a little bit. It, yeah, it's going to be darker when it dries. So. Gotcha. That, that, um, and sometimes that's the reason. I, I actually, in my learning process here, you know, because I'm not going to say I'm a master here. Um, uh <laughs> I go too dark sometimes, you know, with, and then I realize that I have to lighten it up. And that's why actually I'm using two different palettes too. Like this one has the piece of, um, oh, did it change? Oh, no, yeah, it looks like, I, looks like I lost you. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Wait, um, give me one second. Let me, oh, did you, uh, you must have, you're. Um, Uh-oh, did something happen there? Yeah. The, the, oh, no. One might have. Let me see, just a second. Give me just a second. 
Yeah, no worries. Uh, hey guys, you noticed that Susan earlier, for those of you who jumped, jumped on a little earlier, she had a stay wet palette. For, so basically she's using a stay wet palette to keep her paints wet. When you're working with a medium that dries quickly, like gouache or acrylic, um, you can use one of those stay wet palettes to paint uh, wet. And uh, what I'm going to be doing eventually here, not too far from now, we'll, we'll start incorporating that. Right? I, again, I don't want to overwhelm you, overwhelm you with so many different options and you know, uh, possibilities. We want to slowly kind of progress. But um, she's using the Stay With palette that what it does is, again, it has a so what it so the way it works it has a sponge as the base on top of it you put um, it's kind of like a like a waxy paper that you put on top of on top of that yeah, and then a, it has a little bit of a membrane there you go yeah there it is oh it's wrong way okay so I think my phone died and I didn't realize it I'm so sorry I haven't done oh, this okay. kind of thing no um, so I just plugged it in and so if you want to get rid of me and put if you can do that, I don't know if you can do that. Oh, I can't do that because we're all right. Never mind. So, so what we'll do is, yeah, just we'll give it a moment. It'll you'll 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 jump back on here. Just a bit. actually, I could I could turn this down. This whole oh thing. sure, let's do that. Let's let's go okay. ahead. Let, give it just a second. It actually just came back on. Okay, um, cool. You want to show sure. that stay wet palette again? That that way, it may be kind of so that everybody yeah. gets. How big is that thing? Oh. It so this one is like I like this a lot. This they make a big one. And then, sorry, gotta. <laughs> so this is this is this the one that's a, probably about I don't know eight by um, six or million? something. Yeah, no, this okay. is pretty small. Oh, it's a small so one. Okay. It's a small one. Yeah, and I know they have the bigger ones that are eleven by thirteen or something, letter twelve by sixteen. And then here is the actual palette paper, and this is. This has been used several times. And then there is a sponge underneath. It's a pretty thin sponge. And you can just, you you know, you have a, a system for setting it up. I think using hot water on the paper and the sponge. And then you just wash the sponge every once in a while, rinse it out with water, a little soap, and then put it back. Um, I've also you want, seen. You want to maintain the sponge wet, correct? You want to keep it wet. Um, yeah, the sponge should be wet. Yeah. And then keep your lid on when you're not using it. In fact, I might even put my lid on now since that stuff dries out. I'm so sorry about this, y'all. This is- Oh, it's um, okay. No worries, you'll jump back on. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna push or uh, make this go to where you can see what I'm doing here. Give me just a sec. Sure. So what you guys will see with those Stay Wet palettes, and again, I'll. What I'll do is when I start to use it, I won't use it all the time. I don't use it all the time. Obviously, you guys haven't seen me use it yet. But when I want to make, let's say, especially if I mix some colors down. Some paint that I want to use later, I will. There we go. Um, uh, is it upside now, down? Yeah, it's, it's upside down. So we'll, we'll, you can continue like that for now. And then how about it? Can, do you think you can turn the phone on now? If you turn the phone on, would that work? Yeah, I, I, I do have the phone on. Um, but let me let me see if it's it's just taking a while to charge. All right, okay. I should have had it plugged in. Like I said, I didn't I haven't done this before. Okay. Well. Okay. Yeah. Right. Continue like that. Let's get to yeah. that. We're good. So, we're good. but uh, as far as the stay work palette, um, there we get a bit. We get a little bit of a better view of that now. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So, so All when, right. Uh, when it's not in use, you keep it closed. Any paints that you have inside, especially mixes, like before you right? You you mix a whole bunch of paint and you want to reuse it. Let's see. Yeah, you, you, you know it. that's. It, yeah, you use it for um. You could totally use it for acrylics too. Yep. Yeah. I had uh, one. I've used. Oil. I do it for oils. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. Oil. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Whenever I was doing portraits, because they take so long to create, I would use one of those things with my with my oil paints. Oil paint takes much longer to dry than acrylic or gouache, but they still do dry out, you know, and if I wasn't planning on going back, uh, you know, fairly quickly, it was, I would save my paints, um, especially, especially the paint that I mix, the 
because I didn't want to have to go back and try to remix a particular paint. Yeah. Um, I would use those things to keep my my paint uh, nice and wet. So, yeah, or, so you're you going to have to show me your oil paintings. I haven't seen those. So your oh, absolutely. Paintings. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I have any. Oh, I've got. I do have a couple. I've got a. I have a couple in here. Maybe later. We'll see what, how much time I got. There we go, Vanessa. Perfect. Yeah. Vanessa actually put up a Stay Wet palette. That is really similar to what I have right there. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I got mine from Amazon. Uh, if, I'm, if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, Vanessa just put up a link to. Um, oh, she put it up from Michaels. Cool. Jill says this is super cool. I'm excited to try painting this block. It's the first time I've ever heard of it. Thank you for sharing it with us. Yeah, like I said, oh, it's yeah. really, really versatile. Like you can sit here and be out in the TV room if you know, if you want. And like sometimes me and my daughter even paint from, from like movies and stuff. We'll pause it and do a quick st sketch study. Oh, that anyway. is so cool. That yeah, is really just cool. an idea. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure. See how that got way too light there? Can y'all see that? Okay. The which part? Yeah, I just did this right there. Oh, can you see that? The light. I guess did that part right there, and it just got way too light. The value's wrong, and so, um, but that I knew that value was wrong because of the dark underneath there too. That helped a lot. So I'm just gonna dab it up real quick. Um, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Y'all were talking. Oh, about no, that's okay. Not a problem. <clears throat> anytime, anytime you you need to, you know, let us know what's happening. You know, absolutely feel free to jump in. No big, no worries. Vanessa says she has the same same uh, uh, wet palette as yours. Oh, cool. She's using it for the first time right now, so she's painting along with us. Oh, with awesome. I can't wait. I want yeah. to see the uh, finished product there. Yeah, you, uh, Vanessa, you're going to have to share your share yes. your painting, whatever your creation is. You're going to have to share that with us, okay? Um, and then Janice says, I didn't know they had such. I'd, I'd love to find one. Yeah, they're they're. if you have a local art store, usually they have those like at Michael's. You can find them at Michael's. I think I've seen them at Hobby Lobby. Um, of course, online you'll be able to find those. They're pretty easy to use. They're pretty neat because they do keep your paint wet. Now, oftentimes what I'll do is kind of similar to what Susan did at the beginning where she had a spray bottle, like one of these little spritzer bottles. Um, I think you might have seen me use it once or twice on here, but I'll sometimes use this to spray my canvas. Um, it adds a little bit more, mo more moisture. You want you want to use the really fine this one, um, or sure. you can use this to spray right onto your palette to add a little bit of a layer of moisture over your paints as well. And you can use this in conjunction with a wet palette, um, a stay wet palette. But there again, there's so much to painting um, that to go over everything all at one time would be a little overwhelming. So little by little, you guys will see. Um, you know, there are different t uh, tricks and tips and techniques to all of this stuff. And that is part of the, the process. Okay? Yeah. You just slowly pick up stuff here and there. And, uh, and that's you know, the best way, what? too, to, to, and to even listen to what other people are using and kind of hear the reviews, too. So that's a great, you're right, Jesse. You can, there's so much out there. You don't want to overwhelm yourself. Um, do you want to try? You want to try your phone now? Do you think you'd be able to turn it back oh, on? Okay. See if we can yeah, flip it back the other way. Okay. Let me just think. It sounds like uh, like Vanessa's painting the, the same thing. <laughs> you know, painting along with the, the actual piece. That's awesome. But hers is going to turn out really good. Yeah, Vanessa, okay. like I said, Vanessa, Vanessa's been painting a little bit, a little while, um, uh, but I think she has. She also has an Instagram page with a, a lot of her. Uh, she posts a lot of her rock painting stuff. Oh yeah, cool. But she has other stuff. Let me go back to the comments again, folks. I posted them uh, in the comment section. If you guys scroll back, you'll see a uh, post where I put up Susan's. Uh, two Facebook pages, and then I, I put in an Instagram page. You guys can go back there, and um, when you guys have a chance, go check out her other stuff, and maybe give her a follow. I'm sure. Uh, okay, I I have it up there. 
Oh, okay, cool. Let me jump back on here. There we go. I see it. Added it to the stream now, but let me. Okay, I'm going to remove. Let me see. I'm going to remove you for a moment. Like that. Put this one back in. Whoops. Add to stream. <laughs> we got to do this in order, guys. There we go. I think you're back. There we go. You're, you're right side up now. <laughs> oh, good. It didn't take too long. We got that. Okay. okay. Uh, is it still there? Yeah, it's there. You're good. Okay, good. All right. Fantastic. All right. All right. So y'all keep y'all keep talking. There we go. Okay. Yeah, look, that looks really pretty already. Susan. That looks that looks like I said earlier. It already looks amazing. Oh, um, thanks. I love that. I think right now it has a little bit of a watercolor feel, right? A little yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. It does. Is there an echo for you? No. That's really weird. Okay. You have an echo on your right? On your end? It's like the phone here. I can hear. Just, but I, 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 I muted just the mic. Lower, you lower the audio on your phone? I did. Sure. Yeah. Oh, you That's did? weird. Okay. I, I'll just deal with it. <laughs> okay. I know it's a little annoying sometimes. Uh, when I first started using StreamYard, I would get those echoes, and it would, um, you know, it was a little bit of a distraction whenever I was talking. But oh. yeah. All good. But all right, it's looking really pretty. So yeah, and then I was gonna just add, you know, so like this looks really dark and everything, but um, if you add the background color in, you know, also I was gonna talk about the drawing, how important the drawing is. And I feel like that's one thing that gets away from me quickly is the drawing. Um, you sketched it out. You sketched it out freehand beforehand. Is that right, Susan? Yeah, I did. But even even as you're painting, you have to be thinking about the drawing underneath, you know. And, sure. And that's all part of the shapes and like carving even this little area out and stuff. Um, Look how beautiful that looks. Just as you're adding yeah, that background, right? it's really starting to pop. And that, yeah. that's what value does for you, right? Yeah. I mean, because yep. that looked way, way dark, that one little rose back there that's in the background. But now it's almost maybe too light. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it's good to put in um, like a dark. What color are you using for your background? So I have a little bit of um, Mars black. I usually don't use black, to be quite honest but I just put it on here because um, I was working on getting some grays and really you can get grays with just, you know, the complementary colors, but yeah, so I have just a little bit of Mars black and um, I have ultramarine and I actually have a violet, which I don't use with um, my oil paintings at all, but it is a Windsor violet. Yeah. So pretty. It's a nice, you know, it's nice complementary color too to the yellow. So that's going to make yeah, it pop yeah. that much more. So um, complementary colors, guys, we're going to be talking about those pretty soon in the in the group. Um, again, when we do a little bit of color theory, as early as next month, I believe is going to be our first kind of color theory session. Oh, neat. Um, that sounds great. A little bit of time, but yeah. Uh, when we mentioned complementary colors, basically Susan's talking about colors that kind of work in harmony together. Um, to create, to give your composition more pop, you, you can use colors that are complementary. Now, in the membership, we do we we have uh, we both we do drawing lessons and of course painting lessons. So I've been, I think a lot of people kind of surprise themselves a little bit um, when they start joining in with the drawing lessons. But uh, and and you know, and a lot of people are intimidated to even try. But drawing, if you get a good eye for drawing. It will absolutely help you with your with your painting. Is that right, Susan? Uh, major, yeah. When I heard that you were teaching the drawing in your membership, I was like that, not just the painting, that is awesome because yeah, you really need that foundation to um, you know, to just to be able to get a good good painting even. Um, especially if you're doing representational, you know, you want it to look like the subject that you're doing yeah see how that really popped them out oh, there yeah. Huge i really i, mean, I really need to get some so detail pretty. in there 
Yeah. And you use, you use those brush strokes, those broad brush strokes. I love seeing, I think I mentioned it to the group before, I love seeing brush strokes in painting. It's just, you know, um, it's just something about brush strokes within a painting. I'm When I'm painting, I don't really necessarily, I'm not trying to recreate a, a you know, a picture or, or an exact replica of something. I want to kind of, uh, I want to make it with brush strokes. I, I like seeing that uh, interpretation with the brush strokes. Absolutely. And you know, so brush strokes too are another one of those things that you have relationships within the painting. You know, it's like you're going to have some painterly stuff, brush strokes, like you're saying, that you can really see. And then you're going to have some that are maybe more smooth and, and not as apparent. And so, you know, they kind of, Everything's a relationship in painting. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, but I love those painterly brush strokes as well. And um, I think they give a certain energy or something to the painting. Yeah, I think, I think brush strokes, um, and I notice it a lot in your style of painting, even on yeah, something yeah. that doesn't have, you know, like, like that camera, that picture, that the, the painting of that camera, the old school camera that you oh, have yeah. in there. Uh, even though it's just a it's this whole object, right? It's not moving, it's sitting there. There's movement within the painting. There's like, there's energy in there, as you said, there's this movement. I, I love seeing that. I love seeing that there's something happening and then you create that with those brush strokes. Absolutely. All right, well, we'll let, we'll let you there continue with your, doing your thing. Um, I really, and even with the brush strokes, a really good thing too to think about is like, really what I sh I'm gonna try and start doing here is focusing on more detail in this to make this the, like the focal point of the um, painting. And so maybe it has a little less loose ones and a little a few more refined ones and that way those kind of disappear these two disappear a little bit more and that your focus is brought more to um that that one in the center does that make sense of course so, yeah. absolutely now guys really quick in case you guys are wondering why we have those crops on the sides we weren't able to get those out of the image uh, out of the video so those crops you know apologize about those crops I think it's something with StreamYard, not, not quite sure, but anyway, it, that's not something that we meant to have. Uh, but I think that's a, we, I can see a nice image on my laptop. Um, so as long as you're not on like, like on a phone or something like that, and with a really small screen, you should be okay. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I feel like this got a little too dark over here. And the rose is so complicated with all of its shapes. <laughs> you really have to slow down. To I'm real. I like. I love doing the fast part. You know, getting all that simple statement. You know, and kind of get that. I call it like um, capturing the art spirit of of a scene. You know. Absolutely. And. Um, then you really just have to slow down a bit to get. So the, so for the, the folks that are joining us right now, notice Susan is doing all of this with a flat brush. What size is that, Susan? This is a half inch. Half inch, okay. So this she's using the Princeton. half inch flat brush. All of that stuff that's currently on her, on her uh, surface there is all done with one brush. Watch how she holds it. Watch how she uses it. I've, I've mentioned many times that you often will learn a lot more simply by observing, not even listening, right? You just observe what the, what the person is doing and you'll, you try to mimic. And there's, a, there's, there's another way to pick up uh, technique. But uh, some people may look at this and go, I need five different brushes, 10 different brushes, right? But if you use the brush, Use the, the tool right, you can create lots of different elements um, within within uh, what you're trying to create 
with just the one tool, right? Just the one tool, you can create lots of different uh, elements. She's using the brush at an angle. She uses point sometimes in one of the little corners. She uses it flat, broad. There's, there's so many different ways that she's using it. And uh, you would think that you would, again, have, absolutely have to use a bunch of different size brushes for this. Um, she's able to add a little bit of detail in there, skinny lines and, you know, Small brush strokes are small ones, and narrow ones, or larger ones. But uh, I, I love the technique. I love this. Yeah. Oh, I got that one down there. Use up some of that paint. Yeah, and you know, there's something to uh, just painting and figuring things out. And like, sometimes I feel like, am I a, am I an abstract painter? <laughs> 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 maybe maybe I shouldn't be looking at that. I don't know. I am going to put my brush down and, and just try another one as I'm getting a little, wanting to get a little more detailed in here. I lost yeah, no more dark. Um, so this is the other, like a, just a round. This is an eight round. You can get pretty, you can get a lot of stuff done, even with these two. A one inch and a, a round, eight or ten. Um, just right. so I'm, I've lost some of the uh, structure here because I lost the value in here. Do y'all see that? Right through there. I got it too light. I felt like it was too dark, but now I've got it too light. So I can get excited, like Jesse was saying, about those brush strokes. It's like, oh, that's those light ones kind of need to be put in more towards the end because they're going to layer on top and. I really feel like I just got a little too far away from the values. It's looking great. It's looking All beautiful right. right now. So it's looking beautiful. It's looking amazing. Awesome. From start to finish, something like this to get to the detail um, that you want. Approximately how long does it? Let's say if you're not sitting here talking, you're just kind of going through. Uh, what's sorry? What size surface is that, Susan? Um, this is. I think it's close to like um. Six by eight, or maybe six by seven, or something like that. It's kind of an odd size. But I just printed it out based on what um, or I did it based on how the printout from the computer printed out. Does that make? Okay, look at that color. Isn't that great? That looks really pretty next to that. And it looks just like mud on my palette. <laughs> you know, this color right here, you would think, is that in there? But it looks to me like it is, at least from what I see. And a lot of times, that's, one, that's another relationship to think about, is, um, you know, the vibrancy, like this yellow next to something that is less saturated. You know, with color, you have um, you have the color, the hue, and then you have, um, I have this written down, so I don't get enough up. I don't talk very. Then you have like the value, whether it's light or dark, and then you have the chroma, which is the intensity of the color, um, that are the saturation. And so that's another relationship. We've got dark, light, chroma, all. And even we have temperature, um, this is cool, this is warmer, all tons of relationships. <laughs> so cool guys, cooler, a cooler color tends to have more blues in there. Uh, I, warmer tends to have more, more, of a, more reds in there. Um, that's kind of a relationship uh, that you can use within a painting. Some paintings tend to be, all of, all of, a, all of an entire painting can be uh, more of a, uh, cooler or it can be warmer or you can have elements of both within a painting to create some really nice pop. I get all things that s slowly we'll be getting into uh, but most of the time we work in that stuff and we don't really even necessarily we're not really aware that that's what's happening but uh, certain colors, all colors tend to have tend to uh, kind of go in either direction, either warm or cool. Yeah, and you can play with that and make your painting. It can it can be a 
like we're talking about the relationships, it can be a um, area of contrast, those relationships, and that drink draws attention to it, you know. Like here, even another area of a relationship is the um, a hard edge versus a soft edge. You know, you can play around with bringing the eye, the viewer's eye around um, with that relationship as well. <laughs> this all of a sudden got real segmented. So. Which usually means I'm getting too too caught up in the details. You know, it's like um, the uh, woodworkers where they um, they measure twice, cut once, and it's kind of like that with looking. You need to look like twice and then paint a stroke. <laughs> So again, folks, you notice uh, Susan's approach. She went from large, she blocked everything out, right? She started with a drawing and sketch, and then she started to paint over that large and slowly narrows it down uh, to detail. You use that's typically the approach that works for most artists. You start with your, you know, blocking in your large shapes. Um, and then you slowly start to shrink uh, your processes. You can work backwards and jump back and make corrections here and there to your overall larger uh, uh, previously worked on areas, right? If you've blocked out a particular shape and it doesn't quite work, you can go back in there and make a correction after you've got yeah. it. But generally, you work kind of from broad to more detail. Okay. And then the other thing you notice, she. Um, she drew everything at first, she had everything drawn, and then she started working on the main parts of the rose, uh, the roses, and then she added some of her background. She didn't add the entire background all at once. Um, she just kind of used the background that she added in the background. Now she has a better view of the roses, and now she can go in there and add detail before she even adds anything to the bottom of her painting, um, the bottom half. Just so many different, again, different ways to approach a painting. Uh, but there are some kind of general uh, best practices that you can use to make your paintings a little bit more efficient, if you will. Well, it's good to have an approach, too, especially when you're starting out, because um, it gives you some direction. Like, and once you get going, you may find you like something else. But especially starting out, it's great to have an idea of a, a system <laughs> a little bit, right? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Hi, Barbara. Sounds good. You can rewind. Okay. All right, folks, any questions about anything? Don't be shy. If you've got a question about something, please uh, put it in the comments. Or it's simple, a simple comment, whatever you'd like, put it in there. How are we doing on time, Jesse? I have, I don't have Our, a clock in front of me. We are at uh, three o'clock, so we've got between 15, so 15 to 30 minutes. And okay. it just depends also on, on you, how comfortable you are, you know, but uh, okay. it's, it's coming together. I can see, you know, you're starting to add some of those petals in there, yeah. details around all of that. Look at that. Couple little brush strokes here, squiggles there. Yeah, <laughs> and you know the, the uh, bottle or the squirt bottle is good too. Like I said, because you can kind of blend. Like, see how I could just blend that like oil. Yep. That's kind of nice too. And like, so I've cool. really been doing a lot of dry brush here, but I could. It really, this rose needs some gradation, um, especially in this area right here. Could you could you, uh, could you bring the picture closer to the camera? There yeah, we go. Should I bring the camera down, maybe? Either way, whichever you'd like to do, just so we can get just for just for a moment. You don't have to. There we go. Look at that. Look at that, folks. Yeah. A little bit closer. Can we get a little bit closer? Yeah. Look at that, folks. Look at that. Yeah, and that's where I just I should take the paintbrush out of my mouth. That's where I just blended that. I squirted it, and a lot of this is kind of dry brush, and 
um, like if I give it a little squirt, it'll just lay there and, and I might even get a different brush to kind of just tickle it around a little bit, get a little so more you're gradation. Using a dry brush, there's no paint on it. Yeah, right. And did you say you did I miss it? Did you squirt water on the on the I just squirted water right on the canvas, yeah. Or I right on the paper there. Got it. We're and we're I a think... little bit out of view just to the to, could you move the painting over here? We go perfect. Oh, I'm sorry, thanks. Oh, that's all good. Yeah. Um, boy with this roses, it's just like um uh, when you start to get towards the the details, it's just like one little stroke here, one little touch there, kind of. Um, and then you can get lost in that even. <laughs> so at least I can. <laughs> one of the uh, one of the things that uh, oh, uh, Mike has a question. What brand? Yeah, I know you mentioned it earlier. But what brand? You mentioned you you're using two brands of wash. What what brand are those? Uh, Windsor Newton. Uh, Windsor Newton, and then I have also this brand called M. Graham. Can you see that? If you look at underneath that little signature, it says M. Graham. And I got these on um, Blick website, and you know most of them are around five dollars, and you don't need that many. You could start out with a limited palette. I've got, I have several, like a uh, warm and cool of most colors, and then I. Uh, went crazy a little bit with the reds and the purples. It's kind of a different palette than what I um, work with with oils. Uh, I, you know, I just I've been experimenting, so it's just been like, well, let's try this. <laughs> okay, so this really bled, but that's that's okay. We could probably get that edge back. Now, really quickly, Susan, as far as mm -hmm. the, the types of paint, now mm -hmm. just like with acrylic and with oils. There's there's uh, student quality, and then there's um, artist quality, professional quality. Can you hear me okay? Oh, what did we lose here? Uh-oh, I think I lost you, Susan. I lost your other, hold on one second, guys. I lost Susan, the other. Can you hear me yeah. now? Yeah, it looks Can like you we hear lost me? Okay. you. I don't yeah. know what happened to my um, iPad. It just okay. Left. No worries. I think no. We got, if we you got, can uh, hear me, yeah, we can hear you. We're just go without my. Uh, okay. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if I can. Uh, can All kinds that, of technical issues. Huh? Can you hear me, Susan? I can. Okay, beautiful. That means everybody else can. What I did is I just made the main image, the only image on camera right now. If you look on screen, is your painting. I think that okay. makes it a little easier to see what we got going on. Oh, sure. So, That's great. Cool. Totally. Right. Um, yeah, so it's it's not looking too bad. It's kind of painterly for sure. It's not, but you know, that's the thing with um, with what I'd like to do is, is really kind of get a, a quick impression or a, a simple impression, not even quick, but a simple, the simplest statement of, of what you're looking at so that you can, um, you know, you, it's kind of like having a notebook <laughs> about, especially if you're out um, doing uh, a landscape or something. Okay, that's really wet right now. Uh -huh. Got to put a couple of people in the comments saying beautiful. Janice and Lori both said it's beautiful. Okay. Janice says I love roses anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But you can see how if you have the photograph that has all the good detail and then you have something like this, that's like a, a, a study of, of especially if you're working from life of colors and stuff that um, that can be very helpful. Um, so one thing that Susan has, uh, in case some of you may have missed it, she has two uh, two images in front of her. One is just the values, meaning the darks and the lights. And then the other one has is a photograph of the colors of the, of the same image, but with the saturation in it, meaning the colors. So there's her black and white, and, and then there's her her color one. What yeah. the dark? Go ahead, sorry. 
What's that, Dennis? No, go. I mean, sorry. What, what's that, Susan? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Sorry. I go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no worries. So, but what she does is she has them both in front of her. The black and white one allows her to see the values, what we call the values, the darks and lights, the base uh, underneath all the saturation or all the color is the values, those darks and lights. And then so she's able to work from that, especially at the beginning, to get her values correct. Uh, the, you know, all the different um, uh, whites and darks in there, the, the, all the changes are in that, the darks and the lights. And then on top of that, she, she, can, she has the color for reference for, so that when she starts to get into the color part of it. So she uses those two images to help um, create this painting from, from reference photos. Now you, you do a lot of plein air. Uh, Susan, I, I don't know if we talked about that too much at the beginning. I don't recall that that was brought up too much, but you like going out and jumping in front of a, you know, you got a, your scenery in front of you and you start painting from that. I do. It's fun. It's addictive. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I love to um, also, like I'll use the gouache. Like that's how I started getting gouache again is um, I use the, uh, like my photos and stuff from vacation. And even when we were like, we, um, we were camping at one spot and I would take photos, but then I'd um, go back. And before it was all out of my head, you know, that I, I just kind of paint, I would use the photograph and paint, try to remember some of the colors and stuff, you know, so that I could get a good, once again, um, uh, what do I want to call it? Like a accuracy likeness. Yeah, just to, or just you know, just um, something so I can take it home and you know, like like I said, the photos don't always show you the colors. You lose a lot of that, and so like I could just get a good representation. So when I went home and maybe wanted to paint from a photograph, I'd have like this. Uh, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but. Um, just notebook of like, like I said, like um, notes of color. <laughs> I guess. I don't know yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Um, I'm gonna just do a little bit on. Like I don't have this right. I think it's so much more green there. So, like I said, if you're painting from, it's a little too dark. If you're painting from a photograph, it's so much different. The colors are different, especially. Yeah, that got way too dark. Hmm. Now, now we're just watching Susan. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's just, now I'm now I'm fumbling around. <laughs> Mom. Yeah, you can really start to see how it's just a bunch of shapes of value, right? Especially in that one, that one. Um, they, look, they look, again, especially the one in the middle and now the one in the right. You're starting to add a little detail in there. They look beautiful. Right, every... and just that, that little bit of detail, that one little thing. That's why you have to kind of slow down, too, though, because you can, like I said, I feel like I lost it there for a while. This one's... <laughs> they'll fall apart. Like you talk about the ugly stage, they'll fall apart. You have to be patient. You have to stay with it. Um, stay in the, the struggle of it all. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because I think a lot of people that don't get into art because they're, a lot of it is because of intimidation, right? They feel like you have to be good right from the get go. Oh, yeah. um, so many people don't understand that it's, 
a process often of perseverance, just like anything worthwhile, right? That you work for, you persevere, you persevere. Sometimes it gets a little tricky and, you know, it seems like you're going the wrong way, but you can make corrections. You can make, you know, you can uh, kind of do a quick turn here or a quick, quick turn there, but it's about sticking with it, <clears throat> pushing through it and being patient. Is that yeah. Absolutely. And it's definitely about to like um, to everything you just said, without a doubt. And, um, you know, being consistent or trying to the best of your ability, you know, even if you're going to just do a little hand sketch or whatever, like maybe they've, you know, you've taught them something um, and, and they do one little thing to, like I said, even while they're with their family or something, you know, I know everybody's pressed for time. Um, but every little thing you do each day will add up to your, you know, developing your artist's eye and, and developing your hand skills, all of that. Let me get some more paper towels here. Um, so, yeah, I agree. And so, you know, something too with photographs, did I say that already? It's the, the, or the shadows, especially, they get kind of, um, way cooler than they probably are. And so that's why I've added some of the red. And then, and, and then also, um, so like I, I started adding some blue over here and it just really make the flower look dead. Even though it looks blue in the <laughs> photograph, I really think it's more cool or warm um, than, than it appeared to be. So I'm going to stop talking for a bit, Susan. You okay. can kind of just take us home. We've got about maybe, let's see, what time do we have? we got about, let's say, 18 minutes. Okay. Let me to just get into it. Do your thing. Talk to us if you'd like. Or just start, just keep painting. Do whatever feels right. And we're going to sit here and just kind of watch for a bit. Okay. I'm just going to do a little bit on this down here to get, that's, um, something going with that can you raise the can you raise it a little bit higher just because we're losing the bottom part of it. oh oh there we go perfect thank you there we go, there we go. oh and i meant to do a wash on this i'll do that real quick on the background here or the uh so it's kind of got a pinky tone to it maybe not quite that much though <laughs> we've got a we've got a few questions coming in let me uh let me take a look there uh like this is are your are your brushes natural hair or synthetic ones what brand do you recommend um so i have these are um these are basically acrylic or watercolor brushes uh that's princeton and i'm sure they're um synthetic um so with with this type of painting you know i am um, i don't have a ton of uh familiarity with like um uh, like watercolor brushes and such but you know this is a water medium so any kind of uh brush that we'd use with acrylic you could probably use here i like i said i feel like this flat or even a one inch flat and um, around, yeah, this one is, this is Velvet Touch Princeton, around, it'll get you, like, that's why I liked it for traveling. It's just, like, real simple and compact and um, kind of easy to, easy to travel with for me. Okay. I'm going to squirt this a bit. Who all, does anybody do watercolor in your group? Or... There are some people that I've seen, um, you know, that, that do watercolor. Uh -huh. um, so that is another thing that Susan does, guys. Maybe, oh, maybe right. Susan in the future, you'll come in and do some watercolor with it, right? You you do watercolor too, or I'm sorry, maybe maybe I. Um, actually, I don't really do a lot of watercolor. I was oh, just more okay. interested. I was curious if other people did to just to um 
to hear about like, um, you know, maybe they see some similarities if they're, that's all. We have, we do, I know we have some people in the group that, that, um, that do some watercolor. Let's see. see. This is nice. Like you can just squirt, spritz it a little bit. And like, that's the shadow. And so I can get a softer edge there. That's kind of fun. Maybe too soft. Any water media is about, you know, controlling, <laughs> controlling the water and the amount of water, or you can let it, you can let it do fun things though too. So. Could, you, could you repeat that last thing you said? You're kind of all those oh. letting things happen a little bit, right? Um, yeah. So I was just saying, I just spritzed the, <laughs> the whole um, painting with, uh, with water and then I actually and I you know like rushed in with some paint and it it just like did this nice little blur and these are shadows that are have soft edges so I was just saying it it kind of worked well <laughs> just to do something and you know so you should have fun with it and that's I guess probably my main point you know um yep. kind of yeah. let things happen a little bit here you don't have to control mm -hmm. every single aspect of every piece, you kind of let things flow yeah. a little bit. Sometimes, you know, things um, like little have happy little accidents. And again, I said I was going to be quiet, so I'm going to let you. I, oh no, that's right. I'm I'm fine with talking at all. Um, there's a, there's questions the, that are going to come up to here at the end. Um, uh, if, if you guys if you guys posted a question, you didn't hear me. You don't hear me talking about it yet or bringing it up. I will towards the very end. We're, I'm just going to let, like I said, let Susan do her thing a little bit. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be quiet for a bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, like down here, I'm just down here, I'm being real, obviously, very loose, right? Super loose with that. And so I think, especially with like that glass, um, because it's a glass base, you can you can kind of do that and then come back with highlights and stuff, and it'll just um like once again have a nice painterly feel with um we we'll probably have to see that in the end when I've posted it. <laughs> but um yeah I'm just trying to get a few things. You know, another good thing is like I'm running out of white. And so and then if my palette gets too messy, it's good to have a clean, somewhat clean palette. And that's actually why I use the lid, you know, for especially for like lighter colors, because sometimes they can get muddy otherwise. You're using the lid as a palette as a, as a palette. Yeah, just just like um, because this can get kind of um, oh, kind of too, too muddy, or you know, yeah, there's a lot going on, and so if I'm really trying to get some um, really clear, vibrant light color, then this it's just good to like it when oil paints. I always would scrape my my palette off, and here I can scrape it some, but uh, 
the water will reactivate what's underneath sometimes. So anyway. Right, okay. so you're, you're looking to have the, the white background on which to uh, use as a, as a reference for your paints. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's, that's part of it. Cool. And really, these these flower petals are um, you know they're really warm inside, and they they definitely feeling cooler as they go out. So I'm actually using like a Viridian, which is a green. That feels a little too... Are y'all still there? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All good. I'm watching. I'm watching too. I'm watching too. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So, so guys, if you notice, as Susan is going through and adding her little brush strokes, you don't. She, you know, she's she's probing. She's looking. She's, you know, she's kind of almost air stroking sometimes, or she just kind of hovers the brush right above the painting looking for where she's going to put a 
put a, a, a mark. You don't always know, or especially in something complex like this, you don't know where all your brush strokes are going to be. You just start going and slowly probe and you know, poke and you touch and you, um, and slowly start, your piece starts to take uh, shape. And I think I used a ref, uh, uh, <laughs> I used a, a reference that earlier that may not make made sense with the, uh, with basically it's basically, she's just kind of using those, her brush strokes. She's um, almost like a, it's almost like a, like a, a little bit of experimentation as she goes. Is that right, Susan? Would you kind of? Oh um, yeah, especially with, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oops, that's too. There's like a, yeah, I would say so, you know, there's, and especially since I don't paint a lot of roses, I would say there's a lot of experimentation going on and um, it's loving it. It's super fun. Yeah, it's, it is fun. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. This is coming together really nicely. I love that. Oh, that's You're great. also, now, um, your style, your, um, it's, it's, you know, it's impressionistic. Um, is is that kind of the style that you like? Um, do you like realism? So, um, you know, I I do like a certain level of impressionism. I think um, I think what I found for myself, and maybe it's just because I need to learn more. <laughs> but um, is that I like, um, oops, that's too dark. Um, I was gonna say, I like, uh, I like the, a certain level of, uh, maybe it's just the way, I, yeah, maybe it's just my style. Um, I feel like once I, if I get too, too detailed with things sometimes, I feel like I lose it and it gets, and maybe that's just because I need to, you know, further, I need to put some more paint on my hand. Um, I, I need to, you know, train myself further to where I can maybe have more control when I get more detail. Um, but I have always liked brush strokes, though, you know, so I don't think I'll ever like not paint with brush strokes, but like when it comes to portraits and stuff, I might feel like um, I'd like to get to a point where I'm. I don't know, maybe having, oops, that's too dark too, um, a little more detail or control in the details. I don't know. We're all constantly learning, you know? Yeah, that's it. That's correct. That is correct. And, um, you know, I'm taking a class right now to, to try and increase my skills. So, um, yeah. Beautiful. I, oh, I love that style. Again, I, I mentioned you know, that, uh, but I think uh, my style, the, the style that I most love is the impressionistic style where there's brush strokes. And then, of course, impressionism kind of encompasses a large uh, kind of uh, style. There's a lot of uh, different ways to approach impressionistic painting, but I love seeing those brush strokes. I love seeing edges that aren't always perfectly uh, defined, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of really beautiful elements in there that I yeah, enjoy. Absolutely. And, you know, like, I mean, like Sargent, he's a, you know, master, like a portrait painter, you know. Oh, yeah. He, he was great at just, you know, <laughs> you know, because your brain makes up a lot of it. You know, we a lot of times that really photorealistic. And that's fine if you want to paint like that. But it's um, it's kind of like not how our eye really sees, you know. Yes, correct. But all right, let's uh, let me let me get in some questions here and comments. Liliana says beautiful. Oh, that's, that's so nice. Says, yeah, completely lost. It looks nothing like Susan's. <laughs> and oh. she put a big old walking emoji next to it. I'm sure it looks great. Let's see. Penny says roses roses are so hard for me for some reason because uh, they're complex. They're hard for me too. I said they're complex. They're hard for me too. I want to share. Like I um, 
this isn't like the first time I painted this, you know, I also painted a oil of it. And then I actually practiced some, can I show my practice? Of course. Yeah. So, I mean, I practiced and just tried to play around and you know what, they all turned out different. <laughs> and so, um, you know, you're just figuring things out. So. Could you show, yeah. could you show those again? Could you, could you show this again for a moment? Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, this one turned out kind of good. It, it was interesting, but look at, I mean, it's very, very, um, <laughs> just really strange shapes. And, you know, like if you back up from it and look at it from a distance across the room, it's like, oh, yeah, looks better. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's because our brain is filling in all those details, you know, There's that we think we need to fill in on the pal on the canvas, but maybe we, we don't so much. Um, and then this is the other one. This was a little quicker, but this, I like the way the, um, this turned out here. It looks kind of cool. And, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't obviously wasn't going for a finished look. I was just, I was just yeah. looking at shapes and values and colors and trying to put dots of, or dot, you know, paint strokes Beautiful. down. For that. Beautiful. Beautiful. And also pretty. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Whoa, hang on a second. Can you hear me okay, Susan? I can. Okay, wonderful. So let me, uh, we got a question here. Uh, let me, let, let's start wrapping things up with, I'm gonna um, jump in with some questions. Here's some of the questions that are coming up. Rachel Simmons says, is gouache just used for creating a base, shades of color, background to pictures, or is it just, in other words, a background to, uh, like a background to a painting is what it, Thing she's asking or is it just used as a template for creating a picture in acrylic oil oh okay i see what you said she's asking can gouache be used to make a complete painting in other words start to finish yeah. you use gouache, and that's your yeah. finished product, all in gouache yes yes absolutely i'm at a sketch stage still but yeah you can totally make i've seen um like i follow some people um who have gua their gouache paintings in galleries, you know, and they're, they're selling, um, a lot of them are landscapes, but there's, there's gouache paintings, um, definitely being sold and, you know, produced as final art. Um, you know, the one thing that I talk about that it can, it can, like, if you get it really thick, like this isn't super thick, but you can get really thick with it. And you know, I was going to say, I could put a layer of thick on, but it'll start to crack when it when it dries but i've seen even those in in um in galleries and stuff um i was gonna say uh yeah so you can take it as far as you want you can also use it as a um you know you can use pastel on top you can use it with other medias as well obviously watercolor you can do washes and then add a little like if you just already if you don't want to invest in in gouache right now and you have watercolors you can just use some white, go just get a uh, tube of white gouache and you can actually use that in conjunction with your watercolors and kind of get um, a, a similar feel. Like, I think I did this one. I'm gonna take one off the wall here. Um, this is like watercolor with white gouache. So that's Beautiful. an example. But yeah, you know, it's very sketchy. It was just done, like I was literally, I'll have to post this too. I was sitting, in the river, because that's the way I could get the view on a rock painting this. And but, but I loved it because the water, the watercolor and everything made it real easy. Oh, it's beautiful. That's beautiful. Got another question here from Lori. Let me see if I can understand. Uh, Lori, you might have to, you might have to, um, uh, maybe, you know, provide a little more context to the question. But let's see if I, if I, if it makes sense. Uh, she says, so you don't do a color block when doing it from a, from a painting with gouache. Oh, can yeah, you, you can. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, go ahead. I, I lost you a little bit. What was that? You can do a color block and then just keep layering. Absolutely. That's what. Right. That's why it's kind of like oil in some senses like that. Um, but, you know, it will. It, so if, if as long as it the layer underneath is completely dry and then you start layering and it depends on how much water 
you then put with the um, with your new layer because if it's too much water, it'll seep down and start to activate the 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 under layer. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, yeah, and you can actually somebody was asking about the you know the permanence. You can put it behind glass to keep the um, the matte finish. You can also put a wax medium on it when you're totally satisfied with the look and it will create a slight sheen, but it, it will keep it to where it won't activate. And you know, that's the difference, major difference too in acrylics and, um, and gouache is that it'll, it'll activate again if it gets wet. Does that God, make sense? Interesting. What about varnish? Um, yes, varnish that's what I was just saying. You, you varnish with, um, or what would be considered varnishing with a um, wax medium. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to put that yeah. actually out of my, I'm going to do a little demo of that because I want to, I want to try it because I hadn't tried it yet. Um, so I, yeah, I'll put a little, I'm just going to do a little demo of that process. Penny, Penny Colt says that is so darn pretty. I think she might've been talking about your, uh, your watercolor and gouache piece that you showed with the trees. Oh, in the thank back. You. I want to show you something. Susan, mind if I ask, what is the focus of the class she is taking? Oh, yeah. So, what is the focus of the class you're taking? Asks Jill. Sure. Um, what is the focus of the class? I am taking a. It's called indirect oil painting, and okay. so I take I do like this is would be considered kind of like an a la crema, wet on wet. You know, it's you're 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 doing everything in one sitting usually. And um, so with the indirect, I, as I understand it, I haven't done this before. I haven't learned about this before. So I was like, oh, this sounds cool. So that's what I'm saying. We're all continuing to learn. Um, learning. That's it. Right. Yeah, and so it's about layering and letting the layers of um, oil paint dry in between. And it'll be really interesting. I'm really, really looking forward to what I learned in there. Folks, there are so many different approaches, again, to, to art. Even if you're just, let's say your specialty is oil painting. There's so many different things involved in oil painting that you can spend a lifetime learning. Acrylic paints have so many different uh, techniques and mediums and, you know. There's styles, this, even. <laughs> yeah, styles, the brushes, the paints, you know, all the stuff that's involved. You know, you could be painting for 50 years and don't don't let this intimidate you because it's not. I think it should maybe um, comfort you a little bit that there's no way to know everything. Yeah, um, exactly. and you don't so, have to know everything, right? You and, can just yes. whatever Perfect. you're interested in. <laughs> That's it. Just stay with that. Just do it. And then just experiment once in a while. It's great. Yeah. So there's no there's really no knowing everything in art there is no one person on the planet that knows it's not possible there's just so much out there so even even people that have been painting a long time that have been doing art for a long time you're constantly learning you're constantly improving you're experimenting you're just having fun that is the main thing to have fun and i see a comment over here from uh, penny who says <laughs> penny says lol practice my hubby is giving me a lecture Saying, see, even me practice. Quit being hard on yourself. And oh my God! Yeah, so your hubby's right, Penny. He's right on it. And you know what? We're all as artists. I feel like we're our worst critic. I still do it. You know, I've known people who are, you know, international artists, <laughs> and they do it. They're like, okay, that's probably the last order I'll ever get. And you know, I'm just saying that doesn't go away. So what you really have to do is embrace it. And realize when you get that feeling, it's only temporary. And what the best thing to do is to just keep moving forward with it, right? That's it. That's it. I got a question for you. A question that sometimes comes up with, um, uh, you know, the people in my group and sometimes with, with the painting with Jesse Page. Uh, how do you know, and obviously this is a personal thing, right? But how do you know when your painting is finished? Oh, that's that's a great question. <laughs> I, as soon as you're ready to walk away from it <laughs> <laughs> good answer good answer 
It is a very personal thing. It's, right? it's, it's probably finished when um, somebody takes it away from you, right? Um, <laughs> because, I mean, there's artists all the time. I've seen them, you know, post, oh, I this started working on this painting 10 years ago. And um, um, I, I dug it back out and I, I have a new fresh perspective. So um, it's what it, there's a there's a saying about that. Um, and I don't know what it is. I'm sorry that, you know, something famous artists like Michelangelo or something, you know, said about it. Just, um, I'm terrible at recalling things like that. You know what I'm talking about though? You've heard it. I'm sure that I, I can't, I don't, I'm not, I'll tell my head, I'm not going to remember, but, uh, you know, basically I think, the, the whole thing around it is that we just, when it feels like it's done, and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't feel like it's done. <laughs> so you can maybe walk away, leave it alone for a while, and look at it again in a few days, a couple of weeks, or whatever, and and then reassess. Um, right. There's no there's no one right answer around that on a personal level. It's all a very personal thing. You know, um, I think sometimes people think they're going to get a an exact kind of rule around when something's finished. It's finished when you feel like it's done. Yeah, so when you look to... at it, walk away for a while, look, come back, like Jesse's saying, and then you go, okay, that still looks good. <laughs> I don't see anything yeah, maybe that needs corrected, right? There you go. And um, it's so funny because sometimes you'll feel like something, you know, something's as good as it's going to get for you, right? And you leave it alone. You're like, oh, this is perfect. I love it. You walk away. You may look at it a couple months later. And you're like, oh, I could have added here. I could have added there. <laughs> so, so there's also that part of it. Absolutely, um, so many things you didn't see right away, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Vanessa says I used a clear gloss Rust-Oleum spray coat on top of the rock. I painted with gouache, and it worked great. Um, so, oh, interesting, cool. A Rust-Oleum spray coat on top of the rock. Okay, cool. So she's uh, Vanessa's the one that did the Martin Luther King uh, painting on a rock that she shared earlier. I got to see that. I'm gonna have to go look at her page. You'll have to send me the. Yeah, the uh, Vanessa, maybe, maybe I'll send you. I'll send you the picture. I can send you the picture, Susan. I'll, I'll take a screenshot of it and send it over. Unless Vanessa wants to do, which obviously it's her. It's her rock. Vanessa, Vanessa, I'm over here sharing Vanessa's rock. <laughs> <laughs> I had we were um we used to see I don't know if you're familiar with that project somebody did we um when we first moved to Florida they had some somebody had a project where um well we would we would go to the parks and um somebody had rocks where they painted them and they left them around for people and you were supposed to like go log it on their Facebook page and then go hide it for someone else to find. Ah, that's interesting. Kind of I mean, it's just kind of fun little little project. So I, want to show I want to show y'all something else that kind of different. Um, I meant to. So this is black paper that um, I painted on with gouache too. And it's, you know, like um, it's really easy to paint, you know, because it's so opaque. It really demonstrates the opaqueness of gouache because, you know, if you were to try to paint like with, you know, like one of like, um, like this kind of acrylic would probably work because this has a little white in it. This is almost somewhat gouache, but still, you know, um, acrylic kind of ends up plasticky kind of with a coating. And then this, you wouldn't, it would be so transparent. It would be really hard to even paint on this. So that really, I feel like demonstrates. Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, you know, you know, it looks like, it looks like a night scene, right? Like a, like a, uh, I don't know. To me, it looks like it's a scene at nighttime, and it, I think that black background and the and the transparency or the the kind of see through nature of that gouache. See some of that black coming through. Yeah, and that's really just the burr. I didn't have a brush stroke where the gouache is not, but yeah, yeah I see what you're saying. But it, you know, that's to cover that black paper. That's that's pretty opaque. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. All right, let's see. What else do we got over here? Uh, Vanessa says, yes, that's what she does. She uh, hides the rocks and hope people will post it when they find them. Oh, that is so cool. Uh, Vanessa tagged you on the picture on her Instagram when uh, we had oh, a chance. To that out. Oh, Lori Murphy clarified around her question. 
let's see if I can, we can remember exactly what it was. I can always go back to it to the original question, which she says, uh, let me go back to the original question Hang on, really quickly, just so that I can put context around her uh, clarification. So you don't do a color block when doing it from a painting with gouache. And then she, so I asked her to clarify and she said, so you get the same color of the color in the picture. Let's see. Um, in, in the photo, is that what she, is that what we're saying? So you don't do a color block when doing it from a painting with uh, a gouache. You mean a color, do you mean you don't color mix beforehand? Is that what you're asking, Lori? Oh, yeah. Do you, do you mean that she, she, do you mean to ask, are you mixing the colors before you apply them? Is that what you mean? Yeah, that is something about gouache that's a little different or that how I paint a little differently. I think I know what she's talking about. Like, let me just see if I can clarify, like with oils or something or, or with acrylics, you'd have like, you could have mix blobs kind of in piles of colors where I feel like here I am. I feel like each time I'm not mixing a ton of color. I'm kind of constantly mixing. And um, is that what you mean? Maybe. And that, that is a little different. I agree. I think perhaps that's what she's asking. Just, yes, that's what she asked. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's something I even notice. It's like, why? Cause I, yeah. Why do I have to keep mixing these colors? <laughs> but it, you know what it does? It makes you good at um, mixing colors. <laughs> yeah. Mixing colors on the fly. Yeah. Or, and good like even Lori, remixing and making sure you can get the same color, you know? Yeah. Uh, Jill went up and looked at the quote, and she says, the quote is from Leonardo da Vinci, and it is, art is never finished, only abandoned. That's the quote, I think. Only abandoned. There you go. That's the quote. And it was da Vinci, not Michelangelo. But all right, Susan, we are at an hour and about 45 minutes. Um, okay. I think uh, we'll start to wrap it up here, maybe about another minute or so. Um, but uh, when you're all done with your painting, you're going to post it on your, on, on which of your social media are you going to post it? Oh, I'll just post it all those places. Um, okay, all the places can... that I shared. So again, guys, if you go back to the comments, one of my earlier, I, I made a comment earlier where I put in her social media pages, her Facebook and her Instagram uh, pages. She'll be posting the picture there. Also, would you mind if I share it with the group? Oh, of um, course not. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. But uh, I think really for fun. all of us, what's that? I said, this was really fun. Thank you for having me. And um, I hope, you know, if you have any more questions, please, and I can answer any, um, just send them to Jesse and I will do my best. But they can send Y'all them to you too, right, Susan? They can send them right to you. Oh, over absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Totally. Guys, please follow Susan on, if you guys have Instagram or Facebook. Like I said, she's on both of those. Um, and Susan, maybe sometime in the future, you'll, you'll want it. You'll come back and do another demo, maybe around oil. Oh yeah, I'll do. Yeah. Or, um, I'll, I can do several things. We can talk about it. I would love to come back. This was great fun for me and I appreciate everybody's comments. That's really kind and, um, just made me feel very welcome. So thanks a bunch, Jesse. And Absolutely. to everybody out there. <laughs> Sorry Absolutely. for all the technical difficulties on my end. <laughs> all good. Uh, Lori says, thank you. Jill says, this was fun and educational. Thank you. Um, let's see, any more questions coming up? No, I think that's it. But uh, thanks thanks to everybody for hanging out with us today. Uh, Susan, when I end the live, don't, don't leave right away. I can talk to you on, stream, on StreamYard off of Facebook once I hit the end live video. Uh, sure. So just kind of hang out with me for a little bit. Uh, Liliana says, thank you, Susan. Thank All you. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for being here. Hopefully, uh, you know, Susan will come back and join us again. Uh, please don't forget to follow her. That way, um, you know, you can get to see more of her awesome creations. Anna Alfano, Anna says, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have Susan back for sure. As long as she's, you know, she's willing to come, on, come back and join us. We'd love to have her again in the, in the future. And uh, I would like to. Yeah. That sounds great. All right. Very cool. Don't leave. Don't leave, uh, Susan. I'm going to end the live feed, guys. Hey, guys, in a little bit, in a little bit, I'm going to be doing that giveaway on uh, live in the group. So kind of stay, stay tuned for that. You don't have to be live to participate. Um, but if you guys want to see the drawing live, of course, I'm going to have it recorded and everything else. So you don't have to 
watch it. But uh, <laughs> Vanessa says, thank you. I'll share mine, but don't laugh. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it, Vanessa. I doubt it's going to be anything laughable. She's quite, Vanessa's quite talented. But all right, everybody, thank you for joining, and I will see you guys in a little while. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.